And I think for most of us, when we think of a bushcraft knife, we think of something that's small, compact, thin with a scanty grind. Well, Montana does everything on a larger scale and they must view bushcraft very differently up there because this is the Montana Knife Company Marshall Bushcraft and it is a whopping seven and five eighths overall blade length. And with that sinister a profile and that large a footprint, to me, that puts itself squarely in the survival knife, if not war buoy category. And as someone who packs out their gear for multi-day backpacking trips and day hikes in the Rocky Mountains, oftentimes I can tell you blades of this size get left behind because of their weight. They end up being too heavy and you just leave them at home because you're counting every ounce. Well, what makes this knife so different is that it comes in at 9.8 ounces. This is a lightweight monster, meaning that there's loads of capability at having a larger blade without having to sacrifice carrying a heavier pack but having a large knife at such a light weight does also present its own set of limitations. And we're gonna find out if it was digging or stabbing that caused me to have to bust out the grinder and reprofile this tip. So it's gonna be a wild ride as we unpack the Marshall Bushcraft and explore all the peaks of its capability as well as the valleys of its limitations. I'm Aaron, thanks for hanging with me today, guys. This is Gideon's Tactical, let's dive in. Now the sheer viciousness of the profile immediately connected with me. I was like, man, this thing is wicked and in a pinch should easily be able to get right in between a grizzly's ribs and tickle that thing to death. If you were trekking around in the Bob Marshall wilderness, at least you would think. And it just gives you an extra layer of confidence to have a blade that reaches that size range. And again, being about seven and five eighths overall, you're getting about a seven inch blade length, like cutting edge. So that gives you a lot of edge to work with in this package. And it has a very high flat or saber grind. There's just that very minute flat portion that goes right there and then transitions basically to a full flat for the last quarter, let's say of the blade near the tip, meaning that it's gonna be an insane slicer. This thing is phenomenal at slicing tasks. I actually have processed more chicken breasts as well as uh, pork loin recently with this blade than any other because it just has an excellent amount of cutting capability. Montana Knife Company blades, having now owned a few, are just wicked scalpel sharp out of the box, ready to rock and roll for you. And this is no different. A lot of survival knives often have very thick behind the edge grinds and they just don't, you know, they're really for just like splitting and chopping. This can easily finesse and make any feather stick that you would want, carve anything that you would need to and do like a spear point, something like that. And that is because of the thickness as well. The stock thickness back here by the handle I measured with my caliper at 0.17, which is just a hair under 316. So, I mean, this is for how large the blade is, it's a thin lightweight tool, but because it's made out of 52 100 ball bearing steel, it means it's really durable. It's really tough. That is a tough carbon steel. So it is parkerized uh, coating on it just to help fight against rust, but that is something just to be aware of. So this is 20 gauge, four strand, multi-purpose wire. Just gonna see what it does to the edge, if anything. Right there, I'm not seeing any rolling or a chip or deforming. So you could cut snare wire if you had to. But since it was originally designed, I believe in 1905 is when it was introduced as a ball bearing steel, it's got to be durable. So it's going to give you that durability that you don't always see. And it's going to give you good edge retention as well. I've been very happy with the wear resistance, definitely outperforming like 52 or excuse me, 5160 and 1095 steels. You're gonna get a better edge retention and edge holding capability from my experience than those type of high carbons that are often in this size range of blades. And leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about 52100, what's been your experience with it, and do you like that type of carbon steel? Now, it's not gonna win any awards when it comes to chopping. It just doesn't have the weight to put inertia behind it to get through very large branches. I went through several that are about the size of my um, bicep and it I was there. I was there for a while, you know, burning a lot of calories trying to get through it. It got through it, but it's gonna take some time. It is great for delimbing and getting through stuff about the thickness of your thumb and smaller. It'll slice right through all that stuff, but there are other blades, obviously thicker and heavier, that will easily outchop this thing. And you can see 
and expect similar capability in the chopping realm to say knives like the Becker BK7 or the SE6. Now in just a moment, we're gonna address piercing capability and tip strength. But before we do that, I just wanna thank you for hanging with me today. It is truly you, the viewers, in partnership with our sponsors that help me to get out here, test out gear and equipment to help you guys see for yourselves what works, what doesn't, to help you better determine what works for your systems. And I do invite you, if you're liking this type of content, to hit that like button and to consider subscribing, becoming part of the GT crew here. Make sure to hit the bell icon so that you can be notified every week when I put up new content just like this. And I wanna take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Huckberry. And it's great to partner with a company that's started and based right here in America with the goal of giving us access to gear and equipment to help us get out there and explore. And it's great that they're expanding all the time regardless of its multi-tools from Leatherman or pocket knives from Giant Mouse, or if you need footwear that works as hard as you do from brands like Red Wing and Danner Boots, or you want American sourced and built apparel from brands like Flint and Tinder. I happen to be wearing my Flint and Tinder pullover 10 year hoodie. This has the cloth sourced in the United States and then sewn and put together here in the USA. And it's been awesome for two seasons now I've had it. It's warm, it's tough and it's durable and fits really well. And it's not too late to score some last minute end of year deals as they have their end of year sale going through the 31st of December, 2023. And you can score deals up to 45% off certain items. So guys, I'll have links in the description box below over to the Huckberry website, as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code, you can apply towards your very first purchase. So I invite you guys hop on over there, check them out and see all they got to offer. Now up to this point, I've been so pleased with how the blade performed its nimbleness and you know just form and function but the tip of this knife out of the box is so precise it's paper thin almost and that last like inch quarter of an inch maybe no half an inch up near the tip and i i prefer on these sides of knives at least some robustness there it means that it's very like scalpel precise but I was very concerned, even with the 52100 steel, how tough and durable that tip was really going to be. So on their website, they state, you know, you can camp with it, survive with it, chop, cut, and dig. So I was like, well, that would be a great way to test out this tip to start with is let's dig a latrine. So that's what I did. Four inches wide, about six inches deep, went to town with this thing, doing a lot of stabbing and then, you know, lateral kind of propping up the dirt. And there were several times where I heard creaking, where I heard snapping, ended up being roots that I thought I swore I'd snapped the tip and miraculously the tip did not snap with the digging of the latrine. Now, it was pretty soft dirt. You know, there was definitely some rocks and things like that. Uh, if I were to take this in the Rocky Mountains, I would not, <laughs> I, I would be stunned if it would have survived. Um, it, it just isn't ideal to dig with a knife. It dulled out several portions of the blade. Now I'm gonna have to completely resharpen it. I, I would way rather use a knife to fashion uh, like a stick to then use to dig a latrine. But for the sake of argument for this testing, I was surprised that it did survive the dig test. But then I brought in the two by four, and this is a standard test we do with every knife, where I stab it in five times, and I do some side to side lateral. I don't try to pry. Most knives will snap and break under that. Knives are not pry bars. But a knife, particularly of this type of profile design style, you know, it's not a caping knife, it's not a, a, a skinning knife. This is a camp knife, a survival knife. It's gotta have at least some side to side strength and first strike, it pierced well. Second, whoa, two, oh, and there it went. Yep. All right, broke it. There it is. So had to take the grinder to it. Took my little work sharp. Those things are awesome. Reground it, and now it has a whole life still ahead of it. And really was able to rework it into a sheep's foot kind of reverse design. So it just takes away the cool factor. It's not as, as lethal and vicious looking anymore, but it's still fully functional in that way. Um, for me personally, I, I would just have liked to see a thicker tip. And for some perspective, I took my SE6, which is just slightly thicker at 0 point, I believe 188 on the stock thickness, full flat grind though. So it has the exact same type of grind, but it is a definitely a thicker tip out of 1095 steel. Did the exact same test and it survived without any issue, no bending, no snapping in that exact same piece of two by four. So if basically if I, my opinion would be if they could just double up the last inch of this tip in thickness, thicken it up a little bit, that would be perfect, giving it just a little more durability there. 
to be able to handle some of those piercing you know, stuff that's gonna happen. I mean, the, how thin this is, if you threw this in a stump and you pulled it out at a slight angle by accident or someone else did, there, there's a high probability you're probably gonna snap the tip off of that and you're gonna have a Warren Cliff or Sheep's Foot, you know, kind of style of blade. So guys, that's my mileage, that's my perspective. Leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts. Do you prefer super thin, precise tips on your survival knives of this size range? Or would you like it to have a little more girth and thickness behind that tip? Now the pancake design Kydex sheath is exquisite and only going to add four ounces to the overall package. So it goes from 9.8 to 13.8 ounces total everything you see here. So that makes it again, very transportable, packable, and for the size of tool, one of the lightest, if not the lightest I've seen in a very, very long time. Now you get tons of lashing points all the way through. So you can do paracord, you could blade tech locks, molly locks, whatever you want to do with it. You got a nice drainage hole right there. Excellent thumb ramp with good tension. What's great, which we don't see a lot on Kydex sheaths, is we got a nice tension screw right there so you can really crank it down maybe while you're traveling if you don't want to pull it out and it's going to be in your pack and then you can kind of loosen it up a little bit. This has excellent tension, but good tension to pull out and then snaps with authority back into place. So that, love that. Now this handle has three grip points and two out of the three are amazing. One, eh, I wish it was a little different. Here's what I mean. We have G10 handle scales, excellently done. Lots of different color combinations. You can get high vis, low vis like this model, all sorts of options. Very nice and contoured on the tops. So the shoulders are well contoured and relatively flat on the sides to keep it from spinning when you are swinging the tool, particularly in chopping. So that like a broom handle design would tend to rotate more and maybe you ricochet off your impacts when you're striking and swinging the blade. This allows it to really stay in line with your arm impacting edge to wood in the way that you would want it to do and it doesn't spin. Very comfortable right there, rounded pommel on the back there hidden lanyard hold it with a pair of needle nose and like, um, what is it, a paper clip you could easily fish through and get your paracord through there. Really kept me locked in. Didn't feel like the tool was gonna go flying out of my hand and didn't cause undue shock. So in the ergonomics for chopping back here, really well executed. Now on small knives, I don't like choils. I feel like it's wasted space. But when we start talking about six, seven, almost in this case, pushing eight inch blades, choils make a lot of sense because it gives you forward balance on your grip and then makes it easier to control. And this choil is beautifully executed. The grip cocoons your index finger and is able to allow you to manipulate and control the tool in such an organic way. It literally feels like it becomes part of your arm and just an extension of your arm, which is what you want beautifully, beautifully done. So front grip, back grip, excellent, can't complain, well done. Center main grip, got some issues, and if you know, if you see it, you know. It's just narrow. It's, the neck is quite narrow and doesn't feel super organic to me. Um, it means that my index finger kind of floats if I start doing like hard push cuts. Uh, if I'm doing like those uh, large motor skill like sweeps, uh, it, it just leaves something to be desired there because they're just, it's, it's quite narrow in comparison even to the back. And when you look at it compared to say like an SE6, the SE6 is quite a bit thicker, beefier around the neck, which is more like what I prefer in these size tools and gives you that confidence of grip. This is gonna lock you into place. I mean, you're gonna be able to pierce and slash very easily and feel in control, but it, it, it just causes your finger to, to float. And all of the pressure then ends up being on like your back two fingers when you're doing sweep cuts uh, in this format. So I, I just wish that, and honestly, here's, what, here's the deal. If this girth, was matched right here and they just did like a little bit of a scalloping valley and then brought it back up to that thickness, I think it would be perfect. Wouldn't take away from the choil, you'd still get the great bird beak, but then you'd have this beef that I feel like is a little lacking right there in the neck. But let me know, do you like, I know some of you guys love like the tapering necks on your large tools, or do you feel like a thicker, beefier neck portion right up there 
would be ideal. Now, I love it when you guys recommend companies to me because I really wasn't aware of Montana Knife Company in early 2023 and I had more and more of you guys commenting in videos like, hey dude, have you checked these guys out of Montana? They're a, kind of a new company. You need to see what they're doing. They're making US products. They're really you know cool, really unique designs. You gotta check them out. And so I began to do a deep dive into the company, who they were, how they got started. And they got some great videos if you're interested just on like how they do their steel, the history of the company as a whole and the history of, of how Josh Smith, the owner, really got his foot into making blades. And at the time of his licensing to be a bladesmith and get that license here in America, he was the youngest person to ever achieve that, which is very impressive. So the, the heart and soul behind these blades and this company is to make American made blades and to be made by a blade smith you know and, and josh smith driving that company it, it's just super awesome and they're doing a lot for the american knife industry right now which is sweet now this knife is going to run you a pretty penny and all their knives do because everything is made in america and american manufacturing isn't cheap these days so this blade is going to run you about 350 dollars which is no small amount of money and so you're going to have to determine for yourself is this something that meets the criteria of materials weight class, size range, sheath options that would make sense in your systems or are there other designs out there that just would be better suited for your needs. That's what we're doing in this video is unpacking all that for you so that you can make that wise choice for yourself. Now I'll have links in the description box below this video over to the Montana Knife Company website so you can check out this model as well as all the other designs that they currently carry. Um, get onto, if you see a design that's sold out on their website, get onto their mailing list, you know, get, get alerted, you know, through email and stuff so that you can know when they are doing a batch run that you're maybe interested in so that you can pull the trigger and you won't be, you know, missing out if it's a batch design that you're interested in. Now I do appreciate Montana Knife Company hooked me up with this design so that I can show you all of its capabilities, its limitations to help you better determine for yourself if it's the right tool for you. So guys, where do I sit with this Marshall Bushcraft? This is more capable at oftentimes the same or even less weight than some of the other blades I've dragged up the mountain before. So at, depending on how you use blades, this may be like the exact tool that you're looking for and gives you more capability. For me personally, I would love to see a 2.0 version that's just slightly beefed up. Double the thickness on that tip, give us a little bit thicker neck right there around the handle, game over. And in 2024, as I'm planning my trips, this would be the one I would gravitate to because I'm getting all of this size and capability, but I am not having to carry the extra weight. So guys, hopefully we get a 2.0 in 2024. That'd be dope. We'll see. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Do you, particularly if you own the Marshall Bushcraft, how has it been performing for you? What are its capabilities? And uh, leave comments. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this design. I appreciate you guys so much for hanging with me today. All you blade lovers out there, I invite you to check out the other video popping up and to subscribe. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.